Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And yeah, I'm at my door again today because I found the subject of today's episode right outside my door, literally under a flower pot. This episode is about the amazing redback salamander, my most favorite salamander, and probably the organism that I found at four or five years old that had me so captivated that it led me to a career in biology and biology education. Today's episode is about the redback salamander, and at the end, I'm going to tell you why I call it the king of the forest, and I think you'll agree, too. It's a fascinating creature. It's a lungless salamander. I'm going to talk about how to identify it, how to find it, polymorphism, and some amazing things about its biology, and though it's an amphibian, it has a completely different life cycle than any other amphibian. So stay tuned, the redback salamander is coming right up. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. So I'm here in the ideal habitat for the eastern redback salamander, this deciduous woodland that has lots of loamy, thick leaf litter for it to hide in lots of logs and rocks for it to hide underneath, and it's a great place to find them. Let's talk scientific name. You know, I love breaking down the scientific name. The scientific name of the redback salamander is Plethodon cinereus. The word Plethodon comes from the Greek, and let's break that down. The first part is from plethora, meaning many, and odon refers to teeth, so it has many teeth. And in fact, if you microscopically look inside the mouth of this salamander, you will find many teeth on the inside of its mouth. The species name, Cinereus, refers to ash-colored, which refers to the leadback phase, which I'm going to talk about in a second. The easiest way to identify a redback salamander is, of course, by seeing this very distinctive red back going down the back of its, this animal. And of course, that's where its name comes from. However, this salamander is polymorphic. Polymorphic means that it can occur in poly many different morphs or many different color patterns. So this one is a redback, but they'll also come in a leadback phase. And in the redback phase, sometimes they'll vary from orange to yellow to even white for the main color of that stripe on its back. So don't be deceived. You may have a red back salamander and it won't have a red back. The other thing to look for is these very small feet, very large eyes. There are five toes on the rear feet, four toes on the front feet. If you turn them over and look at their bellies, they kind of have a whitish kind of salt and pepper kind of look to the underbelly. If you really get up close, you can count coastal grooves. These coastal grooves are a lot like ribs. They're not true ribs, but they're marked like they am on their sides. And if you count them, you'll find the redback salamanders generally have between 16 and 19 coastal grooves. Their favorite habitat, of course, is this woodland. And I engaged biology and nature when I was a, a kid and my earliest memories are going out in the woods, turning over rocks and logs and finding these fascinating little creatures. And not only can you find them in loot woodlands, but you can find them around your house. So sometimes you really don't have to go far to see nature. And <laughs> nature really is right outside your door. So this is where I found the redback salamander and maybe decide to do this episode for you today. This is a great habitat for salamanders. And this is a great way to find redback salamanders around your house. And you can see underneath, it's a great place for these guys to live. It's got shade, moisture, because these are plants are watered very frequently, lots of food. You can see that under here, there are arthropods, there are roly polies or isopods. 
there's slugs, there's all kinds of great stuff for them to eat under these things. So a good place to find redback salamanders is around your house under things that are giving them protection and cover and food. Here's another spot I can frequently find salamanders under this storage container. And I'll lift that up and we'll take a look underneath. And under here, there's often crickets and spiders and worms and salamanders, another great habitat. These salamanders are far more common than people realize because of their secretive nature. And why do they have this secretive nature? Because they're lungless salamanders. They have no lungs and they breathe through their skin. So in order to read, breathe through the skin, the, the skin must be substantially porous and it needs to be kept moist. So these salamanders only come out when the humidity is high, when temperatures are cool, you don't see them out during the day. They're often nocturnal and often most active before or during or just after rains. Because they're lungless and they have this very sensitive skin, it's really important when you pick one up to wet your hands first, or if you don't have water close by, cover them with soil, rub dirt on your hands, or pick up the salamander with some dirt. So picking them up with water or some soil will protect them not only from drying out, but from skin oils, detergents, or lotions that you might have on your skin that could be quickly absorbed and have a negative effect on the salamander. Another amazing fact about these organisms is that these salamanders are actually very territorial. They'll leave pheromones and dung piles and mark out their territories that they'll actually defend from other salamanders. The other crazy thing about the redback salamander is the fact while amphibian, and stereotypically we think of amphibians as laying eggs in water, having a gilled stage like a newt or a tadpole, and then changing in or morphing into the adult terrestrial stage. Well, the redback salamander is 100% terrestrial. It doesn't lay its eggs in water. It will lay three to 15 eggs underneath a leaf or a log or a rock where the humidity is very reliable. The female will actually stay with them and curl up around them and protect them. And when the eggs begin to mature, the larvae actually go through their gilled stage inside the egg. And when they first hatch out, they have gills for about a day until they fade away. So fascinating life history of this amphibian that's really made it to a terrestrial life cycle. So let's get to the heart of the matter. Why do I call this diminutive, unassuming, seemingly gentle little salamander the king of the forest? Well, it's because of its abundance. This is possibly the most numerous predator in the entire forest. They can occur in enormous numbers. Their biomass totaled up will exceed the biomass of all other vertebrates. You add up the mass of or weight of the squirrels and deer and bobcats and bears and all the other vertebrate animals in the forest and measure that weight and compare it to the same weight of salamanders in that same area and the mass of the salamanders is gonna exceed all those other things. So by both numbers and mass, they outrank all other vertebrates in the forest. Salamanders, therefore, have a giant impact on the food chain and energy turnover. And salamanders will be regulating the populations of all the forest leaf litter uh, insects and invertebrates and regulating that population. In turn, they're taking that biomass of the insect and invertebrate population and changing it into food. So many things feed on these salamanders as well. So they play this giant, giant role in the food chain. That's why I call them the king of the forest. So here in Virginia, at the Mountain Lake Biological Station, just about 30 miles away from me, they did a study on salamander populations and abundance. And what they found was, in this 2002 study, 
that there are three salamanders per square meter of forest. What does that translate up to? Well, that's three million salamanders in a square kilometer. Just a phenomenal number, phenomenal biomass of salamanders. These salamanders, including red-back salamanders, might be the most underappreciated part of ecological and wildlife studies and looking at balance of ecosystems. They play a crucial, crucial role. And because of their numbers and their biomass, that's why I call them the king of the forest. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature in Your Backyard. And just for the record, I am in southwest Virginia in the Appalachian Mountains at about 2,700 feet. Today's November 15th. And as I was walking back up to the hill to the house from filming, I turned over one last log. Sure enough, there were three salamanders right underneath it, all redback salamanders. So I hope you will go outside too and see what you can find. In my house, you know, we've kind of created a amphibian habitat. You gotta see my video on toads and the toad habitats we made. We have toads here that we see every night all summer long. And I hope I motivate you to go outside and look for stuff. It's really cool. And it's just amazing what you can find just outside your door. If you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like. And I love hearing from my viewers. Leave me a comment or a question. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door.